happy. Good morning. So if you were in the right headspace, what would a good day look like for you? And I say this because quite often it's easy to say, you know, if I was in the right headspace, it'd be, it'd be perfect for me. I'll be able to do it. I'm just not in the right headspace. And we say this and then it almost allows us to put things off, put, fi- put off doing the things that are tough right now. Maybe we're trying to do something, but it's, we're not perfect with it. It's not happening every day. And it's almost like another way of actioning the perfectionist all or nothing mindset to an extent. And the reason this task is so powerful as well is what would a good day look like if you were in the right headspace? And I ask this because sometimes it's not as different as you think it is. It's like I get up, I go for a walk or I get a workout in, but I've never got, I've not got enough time for that. Okay, what could you get? Who'd you get one minute in? Could you get two minutes in? Well, yeah, I could probably do that, but are you doing it now? No, it's pointless. And then that effort mindset comes in again. That something is better than nothing needs to come into this, all or something rather than all or nothing. And when I look back and, I, and people ask, you know, will I get results at Fruity Fit? And I, and I think one of the key things is doing the things that you can, focusing on what you can do rather than waiting for that perfect moment, the perfect moment when you can get the workout, the perfect hour workout that happens once a month. And it just, it just doesn't get results. Like if I waited for the perfect, I get a good solid workout in probably once a week maximum, maybe some weeks once a month. Like apart from that, it's, that it's quite short, sharp, sporadic. Is that optimal? Maybe not. However, is it practical and is it better for my lifestyle? hundred percent. Am I fitter than I would be waiting for the perfect day? hundred percent. Yes. And it's a good reminder that those who get the best results, just fit it to their lifestyle because there's things that you value a lot, right? Kids, family. And it's like when you're in the right heads, yeah, I've got to do this with the kids, do this with the family. I then got this with work. I and mean, we value these things, right? Work, we value kids, family, we value. They're not things that we're going to give up. Of course, there could be conversations around work, working too long, too much, or, you know, playing taxi with the kids and things like that. And, but ultimately, you know, it's not forever for things like that. It's another conversation, but it's things that we love doing, right? And we do it for them. And you're probably trying to get fit, healthy for them to an extent as well. And the key part of this is number one, use that question. If you're in the good headspace, in the right headspace, what would a good day look like? Then just work backwards from there. Okay, what could I do? What could I do? What could I do? And what if you were consistent with that? Focusing on what you could do, even if it wasn't optimal, you give it a go for at least four weeks and see if you can get results doing less than you think you need to do. That's my challenge for you. I hope that helps. And any questions, let me know. If you found that helpful, like, share it. If you feel like someone needs to hear that, share it. Anyway, any questions, let me know.